everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And today we're doing another post-Roaring Skies deck analysis. It is going to be Trevenant Shaman, and let's get straight into it. So, first off we have the four Phantom and the three Trevenant. Trevenant is the main thing we're going to be sitting behind while we um, attack with our Shamans. Uh, Trevenant with the Forest Cursed ability uh, prevents your opponent from using Trainers while he's in the active position. Obvious ways to get around this card, such as um, Lysander, but for the most part, we're going to try and lock our tr opponent from trainers the entire game by setting this guy in the active position. So, just like however Domfam would use it, or even Gengar, in this deck we've decided to go for the new card from Roaring Skies that everyone's been talking about. It's Shaman EX, not just used in this deck for the setup ability, which is uh, also really, really helpful. Uh, drawing us back up to six, but we actually use Shaman EX as an attacker in this deck. Sky Return for 30 uh, for a DCE allows us to put everything attached to him back into the hand. So with a Muscle Band, we can hit 50, and then we allow lasers to rack up the damage. Of course, with Trevenant in the active position, your opponent can't use switches or float stones to make it easy to retreat. And because we're also going to be using hammers and stuff, they may not have the energy uh, cost. Uh, to retreat or even if they do they don't want to get rid of it in fear of uh, more hammers hitting them So the idea is we're gonna disrupt them with all these um, Trollish trainers and then slowly eat away at them with a combination uh, of Shamans and lasers and stuff so really really good deck. It has such good inbuilt consistency because every turn you use sky return uh, in theory anyway and you put Shaman back into the hand, and then you can, you've probably got another one on the bench, you can put the DC Muscle Band, and you've already lowered your hand size down by two cards. Uh, you can drop that other Shaman, and pretty much every turn net yourself like an extra three cards, so you meal through the deck really quickly, especially because on like your first one or two turns, you're going to drop three or four Shamans down, so very, very useful here. A lot of draw power, a lot of consistency, thanks to using Shaman. Uh, not just the four times either, we're going to use it, you know, after every Sky Return we get to drop it back down again, so very, very helpful here. The one other Pokemon we're playing in the deck is a single Jirachi EX. Jirachi is used so that we can um, search out Wally. Wally means that we can get Trevenant turn one and effectively train lock turn one. That's what we're going for here, so Jirachi very helpful for that purpose. On to trainers now. We've got Comp Search, pretty obvious. Then we've got the three VS Seeker. Respamming our supporters, pretty helpful, I would say. Uh, then the first of our trollish cards, we've got two Enhanced Hammer. Pretty useful for most decks right now. The format is very heavily uh, in favour of all these special energies right now. So Enhanced Hammer, probably going to be useful in the majority of the decks. I like it at two though, because um, any more, and if you come up against something that doesn't have all these special energies, or at least if your opponent's trying to hold off on them for as long as they can, uh, you don't want to draw into too many enhanced hammers. However, we are playing the full four count of crushing hammer. Obviously, very disruptive to get rid of energy. Turn after turn and be trainer locked. It can stop a lot of people's draw power as well. Uh, with all the trainer draw, people are opting to use with trainers, mail, acro bike, roller skates, all of that sort of stuff. Um, we lock that out, and then also we're going to be doing uh, crushing and enhanced hammers to get rid of their energy. A lot of the time our opponents are going to miss turns of attacking while we um, keep racking up damage with lasers and shamans, so pretty good there. Speaking of lasers, here they are. We've got four count in here. You want to max it out. It's our main source of output combined with Verbank, which I'll show momentarily. And um, yeah, also sending stuff to sleep under train lock, it's difficult to handle as well. So need to max this guy out. We've got trump card to recycle and pretty much he's an also play whenever we find it. Next up for Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball searches out all of our Pokemon, obviously. It's also helpful for Shaman in terms of lowering our hand size down. Other than just having auto play cards like the hammers and stuff, um, we can lower the hand size down thanks to Ultra Ball. Also really useful for finding Phantoms in the early game. It's pretty important to get at least um, two of these down and then try and wally into one of them on your first turn. So that if Trevenant does get knocked out, we're not forced into a situation where we need to go find our Phantom and then Wally into a Trevenant the next turn. Ultra Ball can net us um, another Phantom turn one, um, or as many as we can really, to uh, give us more stability in the long run. 
Also, Ultra Ball is a great out to find Jirachi, and then Jirachi finds Wally. So, four ways, well, five ways, I guess, if we have the Jirachi as well, um, of finding Wally without actually having it in hand. On to tools now. We've got two Head Ringers. Head Ringer, very, very helpful against Seismitoad in particular, because we can force them to miss a turn of attacking, uh, and if they do still commit a DCE, then we can eat that up real quick with Enhanced and Crushing Hammers, so... Hopefully we can stop Toads altogether for one or two turns. And when one's stuck active with a Head Ringer on it, it's very, very difficult for them to move. Uh, with a retreat cost of three, obviously they can't use trainers to put float stones on or anything. So for the majority of the time, they're going to be stuck there until they draw into maybe like a Tech AZ or something like that. So uh, Head Ringer is really nice there. Also, just in general, we're stopping Mega Revolution. We're stopping uh, Yveltal becoming too quickly you know, or attacking us in two turns so very very helpful there for our own tools we've got the three float stone of course so trevenant can freely move in and out so that we can just keep attacking with shaman pretty obvious there and the three muscle band as well critical to get our output just a bit over 30 i would say um it really does help having the extra 20 each time we're hurting uh, our opponent on supporters now we've got the single zerosic Zorosic um, serves a multitude of purposes. We can take tools off our opponent so that we can put Headringer on them. We can get rid of a tool on Garbodor so that our um, Trevenant's ability is back into effect. And then once we have that effect back into play, unless our opponent Lysander's around our Trevenant, uh, they can't get their tool back on their Garbodor. So very useful there. In the mirror match, we can get rid of stuff like Float Stones to make our opponent miss um, turns of attacking. Um because they're just sat stuck with their Trevenant in the active position. Um, Zerosic very important as well against Toad matchups again. We can get rid of the DCE and make it difficult for them to find new stuff. So Zerosic serves a lot of purposes in here. I really like having him. Uh, even as a one count, we've got the three VS Seeker. And Shaman allows us to mill through the deck quite quickly. So we do get access to Zerosic fairly early on. Next up we have Trump Card. Much like in Executor, where Trump Card is really crucial... Uh, it's pretty much similar in here. It gets back all of our hammers so that we don't eventually get overrun with energy and they start out hitting us. Um, Trump card allows us to recycle those crushing hammers to keep our opponent at hardly any attacks the whole game, pretty much. And also respams our lasers uh, for more output over the course. Next up, we have three Lysander. I really like Lysander at three. Um, it helps us up against Wobbuffet. Um, so that we can actually have our abilities working in terms of Shaman. Because um, without that, we don't have our draw power and we're not getting into all of our other things, which is pretty important. Also, in the mirror match, we can move Trevenants so that we can actually use trainers. Uh, the mirror match is actually a weird one. I've had a couple of mirror matches so far. Even though Lysander's really useful for letting us use trainers, because the Shamans keep popping themselves back into the hand, um, we don't actually have anything in the deck that can hit um, 110 damage so either we use a laser and the shaman stays asleep and then we can kill them the following turn um, or they just pop it back into the hand so it's a really interesting uh, mirror match but I think Lysander still is helpful we can knock out phantoms here and there pretty useful also having such a high count just gives us good access to it um, against Seismitoad as well it's important it's really interesting two different versions of trainer lock up against each other they can use Lysander to net themselves trainers. We're going to try and use Lysander to um, force chunky Seismitoads that are on the bench into the active position and maybe slap a head ringer on if we can to try and force them into awkward spots. Whatever they can't um, basically retreat, we're going to try and get with Lysander so that we can uh, make them miss Quaking Punch turns and then we get our trainers back. So it's an interesting tug of war sort of trying to net yourself three turns of trainers. And whoever basically gets the most of those turns will win. And I think having a third Lysander is pretty helpful for helping us in that tug of war. In more general terms, any deck that has chunky retreaters, Lysander can help. Um, pick those up and then we get to whittle them down while they can do nothing really. Thanks to the trainer lock aspect and poison and stuff. It's also important to note that we can Lysander Keldeo. Keldeo rushing in and retreating with float stones. Uh, is an issue, so we have the Zerosic and we have three Lysander to try and get that Keldeo whenever we can and try and deal with it. Next up we've got three Wally. I don't feel like we really need to max him out because he is dead draw, 
uh, pretty much from turn two onwards. So um, I don't want to have too many of him. Three gives us plenty of access, especially with the four Ultra Ball and the one Jirachi. So pretty comfortable at three there. Next up, we've got three N. N can be disruptive to our opponent if it's mid to late game after we've lost a few Trevenants. Uh, it recycles for us. It takes us a few turns to start getting knockouts for the most part. So we're normally going to get good draw out of the end. Also, it can be used tactically to lower our own hand size to maybe try and shame ourselves back up into fresh stuff. Uh, pretty useful all round, I'd say, to be honest. Finally, we've got four Juniper. Pretty standard, pretty obvious. We all love Juniper. Even though we're still running the Shaman, Juniper's still really strong. Uh, here are the three Verbanks as well. want to have a fairly high count so that we can bounce other stadiums um, that, that are going to um, basically just have the war against each other. With three and the trump card, you're going to be finding it fairly often. Um, and yeah, we just need it for our output, really. It's pretty obvious. Comboing it with laser, everyone does it. Um, finally, for energy, we're just playing the four DCEs. It's all we need in here. Reliant completely on Shaman and the Sky Return attack. Don't even look at Trevenant's attack. It makes us potentially slightly weak against Safeguarders, potentially weak against Aegislash. But that's again where the three Lysanders come in really handy. We're going to try and catch around them all day. And if that does fail, we also have lasers to really slow grind them. Um, I mean, for Aegislash at least, we can headringer it and keep hammering it away so it never really does anything. It's just sat there. It's a long, arduous process, but eventually we'll probably whittle it down. Um, and same with most safeguarders, we can probably have our way with them at some point in the game. Uh, but when we can, we'll just try and lie sand around it for easier prizes. So yeah, that is the deck, guys. It's a new means of getting train lock in the format. It's similar to Domfan, and then it has that hit and switch strategy. It's similar to Exeggutor as well, in terms of having all of these hammers and lasers most of the time that's the thing that's going to be doing the damage more than our own attack so it is very reminiscent of a lot of decks right now pretty much a combination of toad executor and Domfan. and as we all know those are three very strong decks so i can imagine this card is going to see play in the top tables and it's definitely one to look out for if you haven't already um, ways you can try and gear your deck to be more protected against this of course playing less trainers um, also playing yveltal definitely the non ex yveltal can be helpful it can kill um, Phantoms just with one energy. It does good damage. Obviously, hits for weakness against Trevenant. So even under Train Lock, you can do good damage against that deck. But even in those sorts of scenarios, if you're the Shaman Trev player, um, they're only taking one prize a turn. And sometimes you're going to make them miss with Crushing Hammers and also Lasers. So um, although you go down a few prizes, you just hope that your end can pull you back into that game and just let the Hammers do its thing, really. So... That is the list, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And um, sorry to any of you who are going to now go on to PTCGO and see hundreds and hundreds of these. It's already all wet, all over the place in terms of PTCGO. Um, so right now I'm playing a lot of you, Veltal. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is the deck, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And I've been Joe from Omnifolk. I will see you guys next time.